Hey YouTube, my name is Jeff and welcome to my brand new TypeScript series. In this series, we'll be going over all of the basic programming fundamentals that you'll need when writing software for web applications. But this series is mainly for beginners and intermediate developers starting out with web development. But even if you're a seasoned veteran, you might still learn a thing or two from this series. I would also love some feedback in the comments below if at some point there's some information that I give out that's not the most accurate. We're going to start off the series by going over the fundamentals of programming, but we won't spend a lot of our time there. So if you're a beginner, you'll still be able to follow along the series, but you might have to do some Googling in case some concepts aren't fully sticking, in case I gloss over some concepts from time to time. Then after that, we'll be going over into the more juicier features that TypeScript has to offer. So the first question you might be asking is, why learn TypeScript? The reason why you should learn TypeScript is because it's the better JavaScript. So really, the first question that you should be asking is why learn JavaScript? And to put it in one sentence, it's because JavaScript is the lingua franca of the web. It started off as a simple scripting language in the browser, but over time, it became more popular because developers wanted to create more interactive experiences on the web. JavaScript became so popular that people started wanting to using it outside of the browser. So the JavaScript runtime was actually ported outside of the browser, so other developers could actually use JavaScript on the server, on desktop applications, and also mobile applications as well. If you're interested in data science, you should be learning Python. If you're interested in game development, you probably should be learning C++. And if you're interested in creating web applications and web development, then you should be learning JavaScript. And that's why a lot of boot camps are deciding to actually teach in JavaScript because it's such an easy language to get started with web development. And web development is one of the easiest types of development to get into in software development as well. So now back to our original question, why I learned TypeScript. Before I answer that question, I have to give you a little brief lesson on programming languages. To start off, programming languages can be broadly categorized into three separate categories. The first category is a set of programming languages called high-level programming languages. And these high-level programming languages are the languages that we usually write for web applications. The reason why those programming languages are called high-level programming languages is because the computer cannot understand them. So those languages are at a higher level than what the computer can understand. These languages are usually the languages that developers write in because it's more easy for humans to read and understand. This is your Java, C++, Python, JavaScript, and Ruby. The level below high-level languages is called assembly. Assembly is still somewhat human readable, but harder to understand than the higher level languages. And the reason why it's a bit harder to understand is because it's more machine-like. It's working closer to the computer's hardware. And usually developers go for assembly when they need more fine control of the computer's hardware. And the lowest level you can go below assembly is the raw binary that the computers actually are able to understand, which is just simply ones and zeros. The reason why computers can only understand ones and zeros is because at their core, computers are made up of a set of chips that rely on, on electricity. And electricity can only convey information through turning on and off electricity, so ones and zeros. So out of these three categories of programming languages, humans tend to write languages that are categorized in the high-level language because it's easier for us to reason and understand. So your day-to-day -day development workflow will look like someone writing high-level code, which we'll call source code, and then eventually that source code will get translated into some lower-level code that the computer can actually understand and run the program in. After you write your source code in your preferred programming language, the code can be translated to the lower level code either before or during the execution of the program. If the code gets translated to the lower level code before the program is executed, we call that a statically typed language. And if the code gets translated during execution, then we call that a dynamically typed language. For example, if you're writing Java or C++, the code that you write actually gets translated to a lower level code that the computer can understand before the program gets executed. And if you're writing Python or JavaScript, your code gets translated to the lower level code during execution. So we call those dynamically typed languages. The second way we classify programming languages is based on how strong their type system is. For example, in Python, you can't add the number eight to the word Jeff, but in JavaScript, you can do that. So the two categories that we categorize programming languages are static versus dynamically typed and strong versus weak typed. There's always pros and cons to both sides, but one camp of the programming language debate loves strongly typed languages because it prevents you from doing stupid shit that JavaScript would let you do. For example, adding the number eight to the word Jeff for some reason. 
and Python will actually slap your hand if you try to do this in Python code. But the problem with Python is that Python will only tell you this or slap your hand when the program is executed. So on top of strong typed languages, a lot of people actually prefer their languages to be strongly typed, but also statically typed as well. In that case, those type of languages will slap your hand before the program gets executed, when it gets translated from the high level language to the low level language. And that brings us full circle back to TypeScript. The reason why TypeScript is the better version of JavaScript to a lot of people is because it adds strong and static type checking to JavaScript. TypeScript is like Python, where it won't let you do the stupid shit that JavaScript would let you, like add numbers to words and stuff like that. On top of that, it performs this type checking before the program gets executed. So when you write your code in JavaScript, it actually gets compiled to JavaScript. So all of your mistakes will be, will be prevented before your JavaScript code gets executed. So technically TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, albeit a more safer one. And then after that, we'll get to the juicy parts of TypeScript, such as classes, interfaces, generics, modules, and more. I hope you guys are as excited as I am for this series and make sure to subscribe to stay updated. See ya.